The Dow took the spotlight in July with its 13-day winning streak, but another benchmark also saw some big gains. The Russell 2000 closed out the month up over 6%. Yahoo Finance's Jared Blickery joins us with more details here. Hey, Jared. That's right. Uh, I haven't given enough attention to small caps, so here we're going to do the NASDAQ 100. That's full of large mega cap names that did really well this year. First is the Russell 2000, which languished a bit, but then caught up. So let's just kind of map out the year that was. Here's the beginning of the year. Everything took off together. Then into the mini internet banking panic that we had, we saw small cap caps take a real hit while the NASDAQ 100 and the mega caps just kind of took off. Now, the small caps, they do house a lot of the regional banks, so that's in part why they were down so much and why they were kept under uh, underwater. However, you take a look at what's happened over the last two months, and guess what? Russell 2000 has shot up 12% versus the NASDAQ 100's 8.5%. And this just really reflects the broad-based rally uh, that this rally has become. However, I was reading a Barclays note, and uh, before, I get to, before I get to this, I, re I was reading a Barclays note, and they are arguing that the pain trade is still into continued rotation. So not necessarily the growth trade that has worked so well this year since the beginning, but now the catch-up trade, the cyclical, the values. Um, so here is the small cap, the Russell 2000 versus Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. And commodities have picked up as well. And by the way, I'm going to be charting all these things with Mish Schneider in the 11 a.m. hour. Uh, but I thought we'd just take a little look at this first. Here's the year to date on all of these, the Russell 2000 and the Goldman Sachs commodity index. You can see commodities still under a little bit of water here, but if you draw a trend line, they are just starting to perk up here. And this is also about where they are crossing their 200-day moving average, not shown. Uh, so put it all together, small caps finally joining the party. Nice to see that. There may be additional pain trade to the upside here. And I'll just go to our heat map to show you some of the rotation that has so far taken place. Now, these are the S&P 500. So these are large cap sectors, but we've seen a lot of rotation and uh, into uh, the smaller caps as well that's taken on a similar path. In other words, the same sectors here. So here's the sector action from the beginning of the year. Mega cap sectors, those are the big uh, gorillas in the room. And here is the two-month look. And now you can see industrials in the lead. So that's that cyclical trade picking up. Then uh, energy, then consumer discretionary. That's really a retail story. I was talking yesterday about how Kohl's and uh, JWN, Nordstrom is really two of the best performing stocks in the retail sector. That's brick and mortar. Uh, that was not the case at the beginning of the year. Then you got materials. That's a soft dollar story and financials. All of this predicated, though, on rates kind of staying where they are, or at least not moving too much. Because one thing we've seen is a, a, a decrease in volatility. Here's the ice B of A move index, kind of like the VIX of the bond market, as I like to say. You can see it's at the lower end of its yearly range. This is a year-to-date chart. But you take a look at the five-year, it is still clearly elevated. Let me just put a line chart here so you can see it a little bit better. Very much elevated, still in the uh, about the midpoint of its range. And then you compare that to what's happening with the VIX. VIX already down here. So my biggest concern is an upset in the bond market. And by the way, I got Macro Elf stopping by in the 11 a.m. hour two. He's going to be off the top and we're going to talk all things macro. Lots of Fed stuff in there too, guys. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it.